clearly in desperate need of a fly half. It must be incredibly frustrating for you not being able to 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 help them out currently. It was a tough game, I must say, but I must say there was true character from the boys, especially getting that red card. Because uh, I watched that game and it was intense. I really thought we were going to pull it through, um, especially with the experience we've got and the way we want to play. I really think that came through. But it fell short with that last try. Um, I won't comment on that. Uh, but yeah, I think the boys were brave. Um, and then they got a red card and I thought, now we've got a chance. Um, but we fell short. Um, I think Damon is doing well. I think it's a time for to have someone else um, getting experience at 10 as well because it's always me and Andre um, that's always there and now that we're not available um, I think it's it's a perfect time for him to mold as a, as a player I, I told him a few years ago I would really like to to add towards you playing fly for the country uh, when I'm finished um, even though he's playing as a utility at the box but I think he's, he's doing quite well at the moment Um but yeah, obviously you want to be there, but I've got some personal stuff that I'm sorting out and getting a break to spend some time with my family after I haven't seen them for like seven months. So yeah, it's time for me to focus on, on my family and get back to the field um, whenever they say I'm allowed here. Yeah. You've obviously been in contact with the great man, Razi Erasmus. What, what, what's he been saying to you? Oh, it's, it's obviously tough for me to, to just take a break and have some time on my own and with my family, but I also understand that because he knows me, I'm always rugby, uh, full out 100%. And like I said, from my injury in, in February, I haven't seen my family much. So this time, uh, this tour is quite important for for me to take time off and spend some time with my family, especially with uh, next year being the World Cup year. That's normally the time where you're not at home quite a lot with training camps and stuff like that. Let's um, delve into into that match. You mentioned a few of the things already. The, the Peter Steph Detroit red card. You know, if you watch a replay, it appears he was pushed by by Quagga Smith. Although, you know, the outcome. It, I mean, for for everyone here, was was it a, a blatant red card or any any discussions around it? There's so many factors, isn't there? There's so many factors because, I mean, there's the roll on the ground. Dunty goes over, misses the ball, almost falls. He gets pushed. His head's down. But this is it. This is the problem with rugby at the moment. I mean, I before we jump onto the next one straight away, I don't think the DuPont one is a, a red card. Like I, I, We'll get onto that later on. But I just think there's so many collisions in the game now that are just getting like microscoped on. Listen, he's he's absolutely clocked him. He's He's done some damage there. It was a little bit reckless. But when you look at all the different factors... It's reckless, isn't it? And that that's the problem at the end of the day. I don't think from what I've heard, and you'll be able to um you'll be able to tell us more, Elton. He's not a malicious sort of bloke. He wouldn't have gone out to hurt that guy. I've heard he's a really good good guy. So what's yeah. your take on it? We do everything uh, about, like below the law, you know, we we make sure that we cover cover things like that when it comes to the ref and, and the law. Um we spend a lot of time when it comes to the law in terms of understanding the way they expect us to to deal with things, um, but you know, as a, as a Springbok, it's everything about physicality, and obviously that looks a bit ruthless. But um, Peter Steph is not that type of guy. He's, he's he's a quiet bloke, and he plays hard rugby, and he gives everything um, for for the jersey as well. I, I believe that's not something that he would wish to to, um, especially against France, such a big game to get a red card. But I mean, we. We do certain things when it comes to the breakdown. Um, it's just fortunate enough that that uh, the centre was lying there and he couldn't get our position and Peter Steph wants to try and secure the ball. So there's a lot of factors, but at that moment, uh, the ref saw picture and that's why he got a red card. Because Damien also went with the same with the same, same aggression and the same body height as well. So that's the way we do things. It's just the, that there was a player and his head was exposed. The thing is, as well, boys, as you know, as well, that like a coach there is telling you that if if any French, if you're a, if you're a Springbok, any French boys around that ball, you're getting rid of them. Do you know what I mean? It's not like uh, who was it? Who was the centre? Dante. Dante, yeah. Uh, yeah. Like, it's not like he was bolt upright and Peter Steph has gone bolt upright and sh- like they're close to the ground and all Peter Steph's thinking is right. I need to get rid of him 
to clear the ball so we can play like speed of ball, get the ball away. Do you know what I mean? It's not like yeah. it's frustrating because yeah, he makes contact with the head and everyone will say, Oh, if you make contact with the head, you're a red, and then it's mitigated down, whatever. But fuck me, like he hasn't done it to do you know what I mean? it's just tough when he's just playing the game hard. He's not trying to be like cause any damage or do anything like that. And I just it's frustrating, isn't it? Because even like you said, the DuPont one as well. I don't know what DuPont's men are doing in that instance either. Do you know what I mean? It's that, like neither of them really, in my like, in my eyes, have any other option other than to go and try and clear the ball out and DuPont try and catch the high ball. Do you know what I mean? It's not like Peter Steph's like, oh, there's an opportunity there. I'm going to crack him in the head. He's thinking, I need to get low to the ground, get him off the ball so it's there for our nines to get it away. So it's quite a frustrating one all around, but it's the way the game's going, in it? With the DuPont one, right? But talk to me about this because he's coming across. I don't think he's taking his eyes off the ball at all. I think he's constantly looking, 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 and he's just been outdone with the jump. Say he was standing still and the same thing happened, he wouldn't have got a he wouldn't have got a red card. He probably would have got a yellow card. It's standing on the ground. So I think they've got to change the rules around it. They've got to change the rules or look at them individually because at no point does he look at is was it Cheson Colby that ended up getting taken out in the air? Yeah. And I don't yeah. think he ever looked at Cheson Colby because he was coming across the field. But say, say DuPont was stood still, looking at the ball, waiting for it to come down, and Cheson Colby leaves the ground, catches it, and does the same thing. Is that is that DuPont's fault for for not getting off the ground? I don't think it is. I think they need to have a look at the rules around that because I I, I just I could see it. I think yellow card maybe if if anything, but I don't think a red. Um, so yeah, but it's always. All we're fucking speaking of, again is is like cards, that. isn't it? Red cards and yellow cards. It's, tro- it's mental. Yeah. Yeah. Well, let, let's let's have a quick uh, break from the cards and and talk about how South Africa still managed to go pretty much toe to toe with the French over that forty minute period where uh, they were down a man, uh, mainly down to the performances of of Willie Larue and and Eben Etzebet. But Birdsy, how how imperious uh, were, were the both of them? Yeah, no, they were both the class. That pass from Larue for the try in the corner is just. Oh, like I love that. But like they are, I think when you play South Africa, you know that they're going to try and like drag you into a bit of the arm wrestle, you know, into the physicality. Obviously in the past you've had France. And I think that's the thing that impressed me most about France in the last two weeks is, is they they found that way to win. You know, Pinot scoring last week and then this week, like they're in that arm wrestle. Obviously they then lose to Pont, albeit the Springboks already down to 14, but for them, they'll take a lot of credit out of out of out of winning that game the dirty way, not necessarily winning it the flash way that we always um, say to France. But whenever you play uh, South Africa, you know the physicality is going to be one thing this this coming for you. Um, but I've always been a fan of of Larue and his little silky touches. And sometimes when you've got a team that wants to bat the door down, bat the door down, those little uh, intricate passes like the one he put in for the try was was world class. 